The main things that most people want to know about their ancestors and family tree is, where did we come from and when did we immigrate to the United States? Finding out these answers tells us what nationality or nationalities that we will take pride in and begin to better understand ourselves. Once we find out where from, who from, and when we got here, we often dream of visiting the places these newfound ancestors came from. For men especially, we think about our direct male-to-male -male line, which most of us get our surnames. I got to do that very thing on St. Patrick's Day in the 100th anniversary year of the Irish Republic. How's that for timing? Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and recently I was blessed to take my family to the very spot, the little map dot village of Glantan, County Cork, Ireland, where my direct male ancestor, my eighth great-grandfather, John Cremen Sr. left to immigrate in 1677. In this video, I'm going to take you there and share the story with you. And if you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when we post a new video. We make history videos all over the United States and a few countries. This video is one of several that we have from Ireland, so be sure to check out the Ireland playlist. Also, I'd love to hear about your immigrant ancestor, so leave us a comment below. Tell us their name, when and where they immigrated from, and a little bit about them. We honor them by remembering them. Now let's get on to the story. I have been doing genealogy for quite some time, and long ago I discovered the story of my direct male immigrant ancestor. His name is John Cremen Sr. And I'll go ahead and clear something up right off the bat, since he has a different surname than I do. In my family tree, I have a situation that is extremely common when you start digging into the past. At one point, a son was given the maiden surname of his mother, and that surname carries on to us. I must say that we are very, very proud of our Carson surname and of our family. It has been proven without a shadow of a doubt through DNA who our direct male line goes through, and it is through this research that we were able to trace this line. I'll begin by telling you about my ancestor, and then I'm going to take you to his hometown and show you around. The surname Kremen was once O. Kremen, or O. Kruman, which comes from a woman named Kruman, who was the sister of one of the chieftains of the McCarthy clan, who was also the King of Munster, one of the four ancient kingdoms of Ireland. This makes us a sept, or a family that falls under the McCarthy clan. The McCarthy clan are those who built Blarney Castle, and the Blarney Stone's gift of gab has definitely trickled down through us. In 1677, shortly after Ireland was brutally invaded and occupied by Oliver Cromwell, my immigrant ancestor John Cremen left the little village of Glantan, journeyed to Cork where he boarded a ship called Crone Maligo, which translates to Crowned Evil. Crowned Evil. How's that for a name of a ship to take you for a two or three month journey to the unknown? John was a teenager and was an indentured servant. I can only imagine the circumstances of his leaving home alone at such a young age. Perhaps he wanted adventure. Perhaps he was poor. Perhaps he had no reason to stay where he was. Perhaps he was running from something. Or perhaps he was indentured at such a young age and so early in history because, like so many others at the time, he had committed a crime and was being forced into indenture. Many of our ancestors were forced into this situation for the smallest of crimes, especially those who were a threat or a problem for the English rulers. We may never know the circumstance of John's departure, but we know that his indenture was purchased on Taylor Island in Maryland's Chesapeake Bay. There's quite a bit that we don't know about John, but what we do know is that he found success and before his death in 1713, he is listed as owning 100 acres of land. He is one of the very first to achieve the American dream and that is something that I'm very proud of knowing. The surname eventually became pronounced and spelled Cremines and that's what it is today. 
The family stayed in Maryland and Delaware until the early 1800s when they moved to Mason County, now West Virginia. By the early 1900s, they had moved to Columbus, Ohio, and soon the story meets with me. My wife had locked on our trip to Ireland as a 25th wedding anniversary present, and because of COVID, it was delayed a year. The delay caused us to decide to take our three children with us, and we announced it to them on Christmas morning. When I found out that I was going to Ireland, the first thing that I thought about was, man, I hope we can find a way to go to Glantan. I'm a professional genealogist and I've been to 40 countries all over the world, but never to the land of so many of my ancestors. We were in Cork, Ireland for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and when it finished, with the help of my friend Ann Ellard, we locked on a taxi to take us the 30-minute ride into the countryside to Glantan. No one we talked to, not even our driver, Patrick Moynihan, a local native, had ever heard of Glantan. Glantan is just a little T in the road with about 30 houses, two churches, and of course, a pub, which is appropriately called The Local. Patrick sped along, enjoyed the crack with us, and stopped a few times for us to see the amazing scenery. I can honestly say no picture or video can accurately describe the beauty that we saw. Seeing the exact sights that I know my ancestors saw for unknown centuries caused my pulse to race and flood me with emotions. I knew that the town had two churches with cemeteries of their own, and like any good genealogist, I wasn't going to miss an opportunity to see one. Just as we came into town, we arrived at one of the churches and made our first stop. We looked around the amazing cemetery and explored the churchyard. Taking in the beauty of the sun cracking through the clouds. I know how this sounds, but I really don't care. It was as if we were being told, Welcome home. Soon we ventured out into the road, where we saw a magnificent stone sign with Glan Tan and gold writing. I couldn't believe that we were really here. We pause for a few pictures that will forever be treasured by me. From here, we went to the next cemetery, which was quite large. The headstones were innate and detailed, not what I was expecting from being in so many small village cemeteries. Celtic crosses were everywhere, and the green rolling hills around it made it one of the most beautiful things that I have ever seen. It wasn't long before we found one, then another, and another, and still another. We found headstones with our ancestors' surname. Many of them. These were modern headstones, not ancient ones. Since our ancestor, John Kremen Sr., left this village in 1677, that proves that at least for the last 350 years, we have had family living in this valley. Perhaps, in fact quite likely, we have had ancestors living in this valley countless centuries before. That, my friends, is a powerful, sobering thought. I said a prayer, breathed in the air, and had a few minutes of quiet to reflect on the moment. Upon leaving the cemetery, we took in the few sights there was to see in this tiny village. Right in the center of the T in the road is a Celtic Cross monument dedicated to local men. William O'Connell, Edmund Waters, and Michael Kiley, who gave their lives 
fighting for Ireland's independence. For several centuries, County Cork has been called the Rebel County, and these local men have lived up to that name. May these heroes rest in peace. Also in the center of town is a small public well. I couldn't help but wonder how long this well had been there, and if this well was the reason that the village was here in the first place. Did my ancestors use this well? The thought of that is mind-boggling. From here we did what any good Irishman would do. We headed down to the local pub, and like the advertisement said on the front, it was a lovely day for Guinness. With it being just a bit before dark on St. Patrick's Day, we weren't sure what we would find inside. The pub was occupied by the owners, a man and a woman in their late 50s to early 60s, and three men who were likely in their 50s, and even more likely from the way they were acting, had been on these stools for quite some time. Everyone was staring at us quite perplexed, so my family took seats at the bar, and I stated who we were and what we were doing there. No one seemed impressed with what I had said, but one of the men asked what the surname of my ancestors was. When I told him Kremen, one mumbled something and pointed to his friend. I asked him if his last name was Kremen, which he replied in that very unique Cork accent, No, I'm not a Kremen, I'm a criminal. The three men and the husband and wife roared with laughter, and I said, Well, all right then, and took my seat at the bar. It was evident by the way it was built that the pub was very old. When I asked the owner just how old the building was, he didn't know, but said it was over 100 years old. To me it seemed much older than that, but I don't have experience with time period building styles in Ireland like I do back home. We toasted to our ancestors and to the success of our day, and soon it was time to head back. We took in our last views of this simple, yet to us, magical town, and loaded up in Patrick's taxi to head back to Cork. As we left the city limits, I must admit that I was overwhelmed with emotion at what we had just done. Our family held hands as the last light was leaving the then dark green valley of our ancestors. Patrick played traditional Irish music by the Wolf Tones all the way back. we paused for a photo with Patrick, our newest adopted member of our clan. We had done it. On St. Patrick's Day and the 100th anniversary of the Year of the Irish Republic, no less. What an easy way to remember what day we did it on. This was, without a doubt, one of the most moving, powerful, inspirational, spiritual and emotional things that I've ever done in my life. I have made it my mission to help as many people as I can honor their ancestors, and the fact that I was able to visit the exact MacDot village where my direct male immigrant ancestor left Ireland from will forever be fulfilling. So what do you think? We'd love to hear what you think about this adventure in the comments below, and don't forget to tell us about your immigrant ancestors. Honor them by remembering them, and they are never truly gone. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. <laughs>